Hey guys, it's Drew here. You can hear me over the sound of that awful grinding. Uh, I've got my 2008 PT Cruiser here. And uh, this is actually a pretty common problem on PT Cruisers. Um, this is the uh, fan. The bearings on the fan have actually gone a little bit bad. And uh, so it's time to replace that fan. Um, it's, there's plenty of videos on how to do it. I just kind of wanted to show what the description of it is with that sound. Um, got my pooch in the car there. Um, I'm pretty sure this car is hopefully still drivable, unless I start seeing smoke or smelling a burning sound. Um, as long as that fan is spinning, which it is, it'll cool, it should cool the car. Uh, but it's going to need to be replaced. It's really making a lot of ruckus. So, um, I thought I'd show a video of what this is. Now, when you hear a sound on your car, and like this, you know, you don't want to jump closer. The first thing I thought was, oh God, could this be my, uh, could this be the, uh, the belt? Uh, the timing belt, which is very expensive to fix and can ruin your car. But, uh, upon looking around, that's your fan right there. So when you look, you know, when you hear a sound on your car, look around. Um, this is your timing belt here, so it's not the timing belt. There's no vibration stuff in there. And it's not any of my cylinders. This thing right here is scraping away. And man, that is noisy and scary if you're driving and you hear that. So I'm going to try to drive it home. If I start hearing smoke or the temperature on my car rises, I'll have to call a AAA or a tow truck. But I uh, just want to show you guys what that sound is. Apparently the car still is drivable like this, but uh, that sound is just annoying. Now, like I said, you just have to go home, go slow, and keep it going. But yeah, I'm heading back to the house because this is an awful sound. And uh, the, the part costs about 50 bucks. And um, the, the labor, uh, there's, there's a bit, you know, like I said, if you're, if you're doing this, look up another video. There's plenty of videos on how to fix it. I may post one when I do it, if I get around to it. Um, so, But uh, this might not be as expensive as a fix if you think. Uh, mechanics will probably charge you two or three hours labor to do this. But it's actually, the fan is just one piece. It's not hooked up uh, to move back here so you guys can hear me. It's not hooked up to the rest of the car, like on a... Uh, on my Chevy Tahoe, the fan is hooked up to the actual belts on the car. This is just an electric fan that plugs in, and when it's plugged in, it makes that sound. So it's a very cheap, cheap fan. And that is a god-awful sound, but hopefully we'll make it home. But anyway, right in here, this is your fan right here. And there's bolts right here, and here, and here. Oh man, that thing is loud. <laughs> There's like six bolts. All right, well I just wanted to post a video on what it sounds like on a PT Cruiser when your cooling fan goes bad. And it's an awful sound, it really is. All right guys, thanks for watching. And uh, if this happens to you while you're on the road, I wish you luck. If, if you don't know anything about mechanics um, and you have AAA, I would call AAA. I'm only about two miles from my house. But if this happens to you on a road trip or something, you're gonna have to call AAA. You can't drive with this more than maybe five or ten miles because it's just going to continue making noise all right guys good luck uh subscribe hopefully this video helped you out give it a thumbs up i've got plenty of good videos and uh also i've got a lot of puppy videos nobody ever watches my puppy videos but if you subscribe click on there and this is stark he's in my car right there <laughs> and i got videos of him as a puppy and as his mom of his mom and his dad as puppies and uh so you know if you're into puppy videos i've got plenty of those too all right, guys. Well, good luck to you, and I hope this doesn't happen to you on the road. Um, I may get rid of this PT Cruiser soon. I, I like the car, but it's, they're just built cheap. This thing only costs $16,000 brand new, give or take, 16 and change. And uh, they're not meant to last. You know, I mean, you're, the transmission could go out. This car only has 100,000 miles on it, so the timing belt hasn't even gone out on it. And uh, I'm not looking forward to that moment either when the timing belt goes out. Because uh, that's going to be expensive. So I may try to sell this car.
before I need timing belt maintenance because it's gonna be expensive and it can ruin the car. This is Drew, I just wanna do a continuation here uh, of the other video uh, where I was stranded uh, and I said I might try to make it home on the fan here. Just wanted to show you the fan actually quit. Uh, so I ended up calling a tow truck because it's really, really scary for your engine. Now, first of all, you'll see it first starting my car. It's already, I mean, it's a nice cool day. It's already up. But when I was driving, all of a sudden, that needle just kept going up to high. And if you let it get on to the H for too long, it will ruin your engine and cost you thousands of dollars. So I just wanted to continue this. I'm going to try, that fan is no longer running. It's making a loud grinding sound. It has quit completely. So... Uh, I'm not going to do it too long, but anyway, the, the car no longer has cooling ability for that radiator and eventually this temperature gauge is going to keep going up and so I'm going to replace the fan. I'm going to probably do a video on that. Just thought I'd tell you, do not drive the car. If it starts making that grinding sound, you're not going to make it home. Call a tow truck. All right, guys, this is Drew. Uh, thanks for watching and I thought I'd, like I said, subscribe, continue the video and show you that. Look at that gauge. It keeps going up, keeps going up. I want to ruin the engine. So, uh... Yeah, so we're going to do this here in my driveway. Bought a replacement pan for 53 bucks on eBay. So hopefully it'll, uh, it'll only be about a two-hour project for me. It's probably an hour project for a normal person, but you got to do a lot of stuff. Anyway, if you hear that grinding sound, this whole fan unit actually comes out. We're continuing the video um, on uh, replacing the uh, fan on a PT Cruiser, the cooling fan. This is a 2008 model. So uh, we're looking up at the radiator. I am under the car. Car's up on jacks. I can't say that was easy. I got a friend to help me with that. I'm not big on uh, jacking up cars. If you do jack up your car, you definitely want backup safety because these things are not, you know, they can fall down. Anyway, let's get the point. You definitely, and you also want to usually have somebody around. Uh, I don't today, but I've, you know, <laughs> the car feels fairly secure. Hopefully not going to work. Okay, so here we go. All right, so your radiator cooling fan on a PT Cruiser is this electric piece POS. It's just junk, okay? It's not like a regular car where the cooling fan would actually fit onto the water pump in there. Okay, so I'm going to show you on the bottom here is uh, what we're missing, what uh, a lot of those other videos don't show you. Um, there's, you know, there's several videos that actually show the breakdown of how to uh, literally put this thing in. So... I've already got it out. I'm going to show you what some of the issues I had that those quick videos don't show you that look all professional and stuff. There, there's some decent ones on there. Okay. First of all, here's where the screws are. There's two screws on the bottom. They are really close to the bumper. So you actually can get to them without jacking the car up. I just felt more comfortable. I'm a big guy. Uh, so there's one hole, screw hole here, and the screw is out, obviously. And then there's one right here. Now, what the videos don't show you, which is kind of shady, hey, there's one up in, I don't know, it's right up in here, so anyway, it's up, there's one there and one in the corner. There's six screws. Those are very, very difficult to get to. Uh, in fact, they're so difficult, I bought this car used. The guy who had this car worked on last, the mechanic didn't even put those screws back in. That's probably why this fan messed up again. So this car has 100,000 miles on it, and it looks like the electric cooling fan's already been replaced. So this will be the second round. Other important thing that they're not showing you uh, in those videos, this is a 2008 model. See those, uh, see this, this is what the plug looks like. There's different plugs for different cooling fans. Very important. Okay, so see this one has like four prongs uh, and it's like in a cube shape. The other one I think from 2000 to 2006 has a three prong cable i could be wrong on that but you need to make sure you get the right cable uh most i got mine on my fan on ebay for 2000 or for uh, a 2008 for um 53 bucks i think it was going for like 120 at the auto parts store so the, in this case i bought it on ebay okay so we're gonna get out from under here okay slowly <laughs> i want to show you one more plug up here if it'll focus that is also one of the plugs. Now, the cooling fan that I came with had that plug already on it, believe it or not. So that was cool. That was really awesome. Um, so I'm going to remove that. But that's just a clip plug that's on there. It's like a little uh, power source cable or something. I'm not sure what it does. All right, we're coming out. Okay. So here we go. So some things you're going to need while you're doing this job. Definitely want a little drip pan like this, okay? And you're going to want to have a rag. I'm going to put that under the car. Uh, if you watch my other video, I've got uh, 
linoleum down here so that I can get onto that car easily without having to, you know, just all the grit of the concrete. You're gonna want a rag, because when you, uh, a small rag, because when you unplug this right here to get to it, uh, coolant's gonna come out of this radiator side. This side you can lift up. What I did is I hooked it behind the uh, oil fan, because if you leave this hanging down, it'll drip fluid as well. So that's how. You have to disconnect the radiator to get in here. Now, um, what they're not showing you in those other videos is I think you have to take out your air filter box and possibly take out your battery, depending on how good of a mechanic you are. I don't know. But um, to get to that other screw, which is actually on one of these down here, and on the, on the radiator, I think it's right there as well. Very hard to get to. Um, you probably need a specialty wrench. I use this for most of my stuff, uh, just a ratcheting wrench, but I, those bolts were not there. And let's see. I'm going to try to show you guys what the bolt looks like. This is what the bolt looks like. It's, you don't need a star bit for it. It's a 10 millimeter. Okay. There's six of those bolts. Okay. And they fit on. This is the new fan, I believe. So they fit on here. These are that, that's that relay that you, I showed that is already plugged in, which is really awesome. I don't know why on the car there was a separate one. So you've got this here and then this screw here. And these are the easy ones. One, two on the top, one, two on the bottom. Really easy to get to. These are not so easy. So I don't even have those screws. So I don't know what I'm going to, but anyway, my guess is that's probably why this car broke down. The fan broke again. Okay. So this is the, uh, here's the broken fan show you what was going on here all right okay so yeah you've got this cable here okay this thing well heck it came right off how about that that's no good i no wonder it was having a problem jeez louise so my screw looks like it broke the screw actually broke in the middle wow 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 you know so i probably could have repaired this because it doesn't look like the motor broke but I'm not gonna mess with it. For 53 bucks on eBay, it's worth it just to get a whole new one. Um, you know what? That screw probably broke because the person didn't have all four, all six of these in. He didn't do this one or this one. Hence, when, it's, when the fan's going, it's probably gonna wobble a little bit, causing that tensioner. Wow. So that's a good example. If you guys are still watching this video, and I hope you are, it's a good example of why when you take your car to a mechanic, you have problems later. You think your mechanic's sabotaging you, they just get a little bit lazy and they don't do the whole job and, or they don't, they forget to connect something <clears throat> and it causes problems later. So in this case, like I said, he didn't connect the two sides. I want to get the car running today, so <laughs> I may reconnect it without these, hoping that it'll go another 20,000 miles. Um, I don't know, that's just, yeah. But, um, okay, so now you see, that's what was going on, literally, the, the bolt here broke on this fan. So when it was when it was operating, it was doing this. And that was the noise we're hearing earlier in the video. Really loud. And then it just quit. So when it quits and it's not spinning anymore, your car overheats. All right? So you have these two cables here. And like I said, this one, this fan is not a, this fan is a little more organized over here, this new one. Put these side by side here. This one over here, this is your bottom plug. This is what the plug looks like that goes into those four prongs. Okay? These are the, that's that little relay thing there. And they've actually got these uh, bolted to the fan, which is nice. And I will show you one thing there. I'm gonna tighten that screw because that looks, see how that's a little loose? That's just the part the way it came, but that's not the way I want it. All right, so you've got that plug down there. That's really the only one you need to plug in. This is already plugged in. Um, and uh, yeah, and you wanna make sure the new fan spins. So there's that bolt. Um, you know, on the back side of it, yeah, <laughs> so uh, either that, that nut came off. Maybe the guy never put that nut on. All right, so whatever. Uh, <clears throat> but guys, basically, you're going to want the rag. You're going to need to remove your air filter here. It's, it's all shown in one of those other videos. I'm showing you what was difficult. Um, this was really easy to remove. You have to remove this to get to the radio, and there's a, three bolts there, one, two, three on each side. One, two, three, these little holes there. And those are 10 millimeter as well. Take those off. And underneath that is the, the grill. And the grill just bolts in right here. And uh, I'm not sure what millimeter wrench those were, but it's pretty easy to just find one by trying it. So, got the radiator forward. I was able to pull that out. 
um, gives you shows you the guts there. Like if you ever had to replace the starter, this is probably something you'll have to do is remove that fan to get into the starter. And it's very possible that the fan wasn't replaced, but the starter was, and that person just didn't put the fan back properly. Because um, it looks like to get to a lot of these parts, you have to remove that fan. And they probably took the radiator out too. So anyway, uh, pan under your car to avoid some of this uh, overflow. And uh, yeah, so, and then you may have to remove the battery to get to those other screws. So I may go to the auto parts store. I want to get this in right, but I don't want to, you know, this is one advantage to having two cars. I've got my Chevy Tahoe that runs. I'm not in a hurry. Uh, okay guys, so uh, fast forward. I got the fan put in now. Uh, it went in better than I thought actually. Um, but I did find it, the reason it was easy to take out more or less is because those two screws, one and two on the middle screws were missing or middle um, bolts. So I was able to just take the top off and then the bottom off. Somebody had worked on here before, I guess. Um, you probably can't see it, but just because I'm going to be driving this car for a while and even if I sold it, I want it to be secure. It may, the reason this fan may have come loose to begin with was because the, the side screws were missing. It might have gotten wobbly and that's how that bearing came out. So I zip tied that one screw. Uh, the clip for, there's a clip that goes into the bolt or screw and that was missing. So I couldn't even put another screw in there. So, uh, but I did substitute, I, I did another video on it, but I actually took one of these screws from this area here and I put it in there. So it, I now have five working screws um, on this fan. Um, something that worked for me also, to get this in and out, I took out the engine oil dipstick. You don't want to get any coolant or anything in there, but this was sort of in the way. Uh, so when I pulled the radiator back, but it's on there, you can see it now. This is the new uh, cooling fan. I haven't turned the car on yet. We'll see. Hopefully it'll work. Another thing I didn't mention in the beginning: um, when you pull this uh, radiator, uh, uh, this thing out right here, you gotta you gotta do that to get the radiator to slide back. You want to take the top off the cap off the radiator so it doesn't all ooze out and bubble out and uh, I actually took a uh, turkey baster one that I don't use for eating and I dipped a little bit out of the top of this so it wouldn't overflow and leak when I was doing it so uh, hopefully this worked out well he said you got to take this air filter cover off and if you can't get to that screw in there I actually found it easier to get to the middle screw from the underside of the car from underside uh, it was easier to reach in there and get to. On this side, it's probably easier on the top. On this side, it's on the bottom. There's slightly, you know, I guess you could always take that battery out and kind of work around that and even take the air filter casing out if you have to. The less you take out, the better. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, you know, you don't want to overdo it. But uh, uh, I feel pretty successful about this. Now all I need to do is put, put all the coverings back on. And then, uh, you know, if, I may not have mentioned this, but you know, there's a video on how to do all this step by step. You definitely want to remove this uh, piece here that goes into the radiator because uh, there's a little clamp on the, on this part right here. That's right. <laughs> uh, you want to remove this because, uh, and then, and this part here from the radiator because it makes it much easier to get to and pull the radiator back. So this goes on this just we're not putting it back to I'm not gonna permanently put it but you give me an idea of where it goes and then this grill cover right here goes back here and voila that's your car back to where it should be I mean it really isn't that hard this job was not that difficult so I would say an average person could do it you also take off this uh, this stripping here don't want to forget about that this part here um, you know uh, other than uh, having to get under the car to get to those bolts and screws and uh, plug in the fan. Um, it does take a little wiggling once the radiator's in to get that. Let me pull this back out. And you just set that there. Um, it takes a little wiggling to get the uh, fan in from the radiator. You just kind of kind of work it in. You don't want to damage this grill in the front. Uh, but overall, I'd say it was, you know, difficulty. <laughs> well, with one being the least hardest and ten being the hardest. Uh, I would give this a five. Literally, it's 50-50. Some people are more skilled than others. Um, but, you know, for the $50 that this cooling fan costs, I bet this job probably is about 200 maybe 250 uh, In fact, the, you do it at a dealership, they're going to charge you like 130 for the fan probably. I, don't, I didn't price that out, but it's usually double what you pay on eBay. Um, so then you're going to pay two, three hours labor at 100 bucks an hour. So it could be easily $300 at a dealership. 
uh, $80 an hour for a mechanic, you're looking at least two hours labor probably for this. So for 50 bucks, this saved me um, a lot. And like I said, you have this little relay. These are the uh, fuses here. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this job went. Ready to put it back together. Um, if you had any questions about this, you're welcome to post them and I'll see if I can answer them. Um, <clears throat> mostly in this video, I tried to point out uh, difficulties I had um, instead of being a full explanation video. There's plenty of videos. There's like three good videos on people doing this step-by-step -step and editing and getting everything done. Um, I like to just show uh, how I did it, how I did it, and difficulties I had versus editing and step-by-step. -step. So my video style is a little different, but uh, like I said, we got everything back together here, and I'm looking forward to starting the car. And uh, this, like I said, it worked a lot better than I thought. Hopefully it'll run. <laughs> All right, guys, so I got the fan installed, and uh, I'm about to crank it up. Um, I actually cranked it up earlier, and the fan didn't start. And uh, so I was freaking out. I was like, oh, my God, could this thing be defective? I got it on eBay, and, yeah, I was thinking, I was like, I'm going to, I'd already tightened all the bolts in there and everything. Well, there's a solution to that, and I'm glad you guys have hung in there for this whole video, this whole process, because this is really important. Most cars, like my Chevy Tahoe, the fan continuously runs when you start the engine. So I started the engine, and the fan wasn't running. I was like, uh-oh, is the part not working? So we're cranking it up. The fan is not on. It's not running. It's hard to see. So that's why I put this little flap here, this little, uh, yeah, little flaggy thing. Okay, so watch this. Here is how you know your part's working. Apparently, the thermostat only turns on on the car to turn that fan on when the car uh, heats up or you turn on your air conditioner. So put it on high. I'm putting it on extra on a high speed maximum, extra cool there. You got to hit the internal. Okay. And guess what? It's going to turn that fan on. Zip one. So that's how you know once you've installed the fan that it works. Look at that, it's wonderful. Blowing away there. So I got tricked and uh, I'm ecstatic that it works. Uh, so after all that work and all those videos that I merged together, this is probably the end of it. But I just wanted to tell you guys, um, be aware of that. You know, you wanna make sure that fan's working before you plug it in. Um, I wanna tell you that I called a dealership. The dealership was charging $440 for the factory part for this fan. I got it for 53 bucks on eBay. I don't know about the quality, I don't know how long it'll last, but uh, you know what, that's fine. The average uh, hours to do this at a mechanic was about two hours. Um, the dealership charges 125 an hour for labor. So a job like this done by the dealership was about $700, $690 plus tax. Um, and I called some other local shops. It was about 500. The most expensive part of it was the part, the fan. They all wanted around 190 to uh, 400 for it, you know. Um, at AutoZone, AutoZone didn't carry the fan. Not that I could see. Um, Advanced Auto Parts had the fan for about 120 and change, I guess. So eBay is a great place to get parts. So if you've uh, hung in there this long with me on this video. Just want to show you, I'm going to finish uh, putting this back together, put the rest of the car together. But uh, um, let's just go over a couple things again in um, case fast forward. It helps to remove this engine oil dipstick. You want to make sure you clean it off and put it in a clean place because you can get in there a little easier without that. Um, you're going to take the radiator hose out and you want to have a, a, a rag to put in there because it's going to leak everywhere. Maybe something underneath. You tuck the radiator hose behind the transmission thing here. It works really well. You know, take this this uh, cover off, and uh, you before you take your radio hose off, you're gonna want to loosen the cap here and let some of that pressure loose on the radiator so that it just doesn't come gushing out of there. Um, uh, like I said, those hidden bolts down there on the on the side in the middle, the ones that nobody else showed, those are kind of hard to get to. Um, you want to make sure you get to those. Um, but uh, overall, I said this job was not very hard. Uh, and uh, I feel accomplished by doing it. You want to disconnect the radiator from here so you can pull it forward when you're working after this is done. Um, I think that's all I can remember to tell you guys about this job. 
it was, it, like I said, it was a lot of, it's, I feel this great sense of satisfaction. I feel like I paid myself to do this work. I feel like I got paid $500 this week. And of course I had that second car so I could get around. I'm not stranded, but that, if you watch my other video on owning a second vehicle, even if it's an older car, that paid for itself right there because I didn't have to rush to get this job done. I could wait for the parts to come on eBay. I didn't have to, you know, I have my other car to drive. Uh, if you took it to the shop, that's five, seven hundred dollars. I paid for my insurance for the year just by on two vehicles just by doing this job myself. So unreal. Okay, so we're gonna take the tape off there now because we know we've got done. All right, guys. Well, um, mission accomplished. I just gotta put the uh, the grill back on and I'll put this this uh, rubber lip back on here. Um, you know, check out some of the other videos um, about this. There's maybe three or four about it. So you take what you can get out of each video. I found certain things that I showed in my video that were not available in other videos. Um, so I wanna thank you again for watching this very long video, this continuation. I probably did six videos and merged them all into one. I just learned how to edit. So guys, this is Drew. Thank you, I hope you get your radiator fan. Uh, electric cooling fan installed. I hope it only cost you 50, 60 bucks like it did for me. And uh, remember, if you're using jacks to secure, put some blocks under there as well, because you just never know if something's going to come loose and you're going to hurt yourself. So overall, this job was really easy. You may not even need jacks. This car was lowered. Thanks, guys. This is Drew. Subscribe. Share this with your friends who own PT Cruisers. These fans go out on a regular basis. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes out after another 20,000 miles. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.